We have just learned about beats and how to find the beat of the entrepreneur song. Now we are going to go a step further and subdivide those beats. Before your head explodes, it is actually pretty easy and will give you the opportunity to DJ some of your own music. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to subdivide the beats. In particular, we will focus on 16th notes for the make beat function. And we will combine the strings to match actual notes. Now is the time to start DJing in ear sketch. The function make beat will allow you to remix note by note or beat by beat to create your own custom rhythms. This is often called step sequencing in music production. The function make beat allows you to apply your knowledge of subbeats using a series of characters to represent each 16th note in a measure. These series of characters form a string to define a beat pattern in ear sketch. So first let's take a look at the string data type. A string is a series of characters inside quotation marks. If you've been using the adhesive curriculum, then you know a lot about strings because that was a whole big part of the curriculum. Even in Code Sculptor, you were using some strings. So you know that a string variable, first of all, has a name. Then after the equal sign, anything in quotation marks is part of that string. Strings are often used to represent non-numeric data, but a string can include numbers as characters. The use of quotation marks to indicate a string is very important. If you don't have quotation marks, you don't have a string. Let's take a look at the parts of the make beat function. There are four parameters, so there are four things that you're going to be putting in parentheses after the word make beat. The first thing is the clip name. Now we could put the actual whole entire clip in there, but we've been learning about variables. So you'll see at the first part of this example, I've defined two variables, beats one and beats two, where I have pasted the clip name there so I can use it easily and I can change it easily if I want to. The second parameter is the track number. You want to have each make beat on its own track separate from anything else from any fit media. So you're going to end up with a whole lot of tracks and that's okay. The third number is the starting measure. So where do you want this beat to start? And it can you can have more than one beat starting the same measure or you can um, stagger them and start at different measures. And then the last thing is the fill string that you want. So you can see also that I have defined variables for the fills and each variable has a string value in quotation marks that indicates the rhythm that I want to include. So let's just to kind of remind ourselves about the clip name. Remember a clip name will be a variable instead of the actual clip itself. And it's recommended that you use a kick or hi-hat or drum beat for this because it is a rhythm. So using something else, you can use it, but it just won't, doesn't make as much sense. So when you're doing a search for a clip, you might want to search for a kick, a hi-hat, or a drum beat. You're going to name the variable. I use beats, beats one, beats two. Uh, you can use anything that's descriptive, but make sure every variable name is different and unique. Then you're going to click on that blue clipboard icon of the clip that you want to assign the value to the variable. Just the same as you've been doing for all the other clips. Now the next thing we need to talk about really is this fill variable. There are three things that you can use as strings in the fill variable. You can use a zero, which represents a sound or a beat like a clap. A dash is a rest, so no sound. And a plus extends it. So each single zero is a sixteenth of a note. If I want that to go longer, I can extend it with a plus. I can extend it even longer with two pluses. So you can stack the pluses. Uh, so we're going to do things in groups of four because it's a sixteenth note and four sixteenth notes makes one quarter note, which is one beat of a measure. And there's four beats per measure, so it's a total of sixteen characters. You can see the examples down here that I highlighted in red. The first four, that's one beat. The second four is another beat. The third four and the fourth four. So all together I have 16. They're not going to be color coded when you code them, but this is just to help you visualize what you're doing. So you're going to use groups of four. Each group of four is one beat and four beats make a measure. One measure will have 16 characters and each fill is a string variable. Now you can have more than 16. 
you could double that and have 32, but you want to be in groups of 16. So if I have one measure of a beat, that's 16 characters. 32 characters would be two measures, and so on. So all of my examples are for one measure, but you can certainly go longer. If you'd like more information on this, you can go to that curriculum tab in Ear Sketch, go to Unit 2, Chapter 11, and there's a whole section on Make Beat, even a little video. Now, since each of these fills is only for one measure, maybe I want to repeat that several times. I could call it, you know, like if I wanted to repeat it four times, I could call it four times, or I can use a loop. So here's just a quick example of how to structure a loop. I start with the word for, and then I have some kind of variable here. I'm using the word measure because um, each fill is one measure. And then I have the word in, range, and this is the, the first number in the range is the first measure I want to start at, and then one past the last measure. So this is going to go starting on measure 9 and all the way through 16, and when it gets to measure 17, it stops. So this is going to give me eight measures of fill C. I'm using another variable kicks and I'm starting on track 12 and then measure is this variable that I'm using in my for loop and then every time I go through the loop the measure increases one so it's going to start at 9 and then 10 and then 11 and then 12 so on and so forth. So you just use this structure and you can make the range whatever you like for which measures you want it to go. If a loop is confusing to you, then don't think you have to use it, but some of you will like it. Now let's take a look at how this looks in Ear Sketch. So I have added some, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. I have added three variables for beats, and I did put them separate. I don't have to. So here are my sound bank variables. I could keep it there in my sound bank variables, but I just I did separate them to show you so it's a little bit more clear about exactly what I'm doing. So I added two beats, that one's a drum and one's a hi-hat, and then I added another one that's a kick. So I called it kicks, but I could have still called it beats three. You want to be kind of consistent. Then I have three fills here. You can have as many as you want, and you can reuse the same beats variables, and you can reuse the fills as many times as you want. So if I was going to create this, I might want to just kind of divide it with a space into the four so I can see them. When I actually run it, I need to take out the spaces. But if this helps you know that I've got four, 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 one beat, two beat, three beats, four beats, if that helps you, that's something you can do. And then once you have it all put together, take out those spaces. Let's listen to Phil A. I've changed the tempo a bit. I've made it slower, like 80, so you can kind of see what's going on. And right now, let's only take a look at fill A. So you can see where I have the zeros. This is where you should have hear the beats. And when there's dashes, you should not hear anything. Let's see if you can hear it. Okay, did you get that? Now let's let's take a let's listen to fill B. And you can see I don't have any pluses, so you're just going to hear a beat or not a beat. And you, it's a little hard to see here, but it's right there on track 11, so I'm going to turn this one on. Okay, so you're kind of seeing how it's going, how the zeros make a sound and the dashes don't make a sound. Let's, um, let's add this up a little bit. I'm going to put like a, a plus here so you can hear an extended. And let's see, I'm going to put a, maybe I'll put a plus right here as well. So I'll put a plus, a couple pluses in there so you can hear uh, what that might sound like, how the zero is going to be a little bit longer than just a single beat. Okay, so we're down here on track 12 with Phil C. And one thing you might notice is I put fill C in a loop. I'll just kind of come down here. So you can see I've got it only listed one time, but it's going to repeat eight times. That's why it looks so long right there. So that's what a loop lets you do. All right, so let's just hear fill C. Take a look at it so you can see where you should be hearing beats and what an extended beat might sound like. And here we go. Okay, 
So that's some things, some rhythms that you can add to your music. If you feel comfortable doing it, give it a try. You could put some in your intro. You could put some in your verse. You can reuse them. You can even reverse them. There's a lot of things that you can do with your fill. So it's worth giving it a try.